All right, guys, uh, it's been a, quite a few since the last upload. Um, I've been I've been actually playing more than I have been opening, so uh, it's been fun. I love the fact that we're out of uh, the whole stay home. Uh, I do have the new set from Magic the Gathering, which I've been anticipating for a long time. I'm a huge fan of Dungeons & Dragons. I've been playing Dungeons & Dragons since I was a child of, like, a... I don't know, 10 or 11, maybe even a little earlier. Right around third grade is really when I got into it. Um, started reading the novels and stuff, so I'm very familiar with Forgotten Realms. Um, and a lot of the uh, characters in Forgotten Realms. So seeing this set and this combination has been really, really cool. Um, Magic the Gathering is one of my favorite games. Um, and to see them combine with Forgotten Realms is... Kind of like a boyish, uh, boyish dream come true. Um, so I'll probably go through the cards a little slower than normal, which I'm already the slowest person ever when it comes to cards. Um, but I really want to take a look at these and take a look at the artworks on these. Uh, this is really cool. Like I think this is. We'll look at who who drew them. We got Circle of the Dream Druid by Sam Gay. I like. That's a cool, <laughs> the cool art card. Um, I like these art cards. This is why I buy the set boxes over the other stuff. We got ourselves a foil land. What's really cool is this first time the basic lands have had any type of wording on them, and it's a, it's an, well, it looks to be a D and D setting. So if you were like having a, your own D and D adventure, you could start your adventure beneath the desert sand. You've discovered an alien power pulsing with inconceivable energy. So this is like the adventure hook. Like this is the setting that you would be having your first adventure with. So I, I really like the way that these are are done. Um, the lands finally have some type of little flavor to them. These are the showcase cards right off the bat. This is really fun. Um, it's old timey art from like first and second edition. It kind of reminds me of the the coffee stained paper. Um, the background of the color of the th thing shows indicates that it's a multicolored. That's why it's gold. But the drawings are like old school drawings, and I even recognize like I don't recognize Pedro Potter um, or Potier, uh, but I know that th some of these have actually been drawn by the original artists who drew them in the first the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons, which I think is freaking cool. So uh, we got ourselves. Faraday, Devil's Chosen. Not a familiar character for me. Um, I do understand Devils. Like, another thing that they've done is... Uh, these are little Dark Ones' own luck. Like, they're like flavor keywords that are specific to Dungeons & Dragons, which I think really adds a lot of flavor to the to the set itself. And then we got ourselves some Commons, Unexpected Windfall, which is just a treasure card, right? Price of Loyalty. Just a standard card. Uh, Sepulchred Ghoul. Displacer Beast. Like, one of the most iconic... Creatures in Dungeons and Dragons is the Displacer Beast. Let's let's just look at like its flavor and see if it fits like uh, fits in the D and D scene setting, right? So let's see. When the Displacer Beast enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Okay, uh, maybe. Um, Displacer Beast has displacement, which is three and a blue. Return Displacer Beast to its owner's hand. So it has a lot of elusiveness, which is which is what a Displacer Beast is. Um, most of the time when you're attacking a Displacer Beast, there's a good chance you're just going to miss. A Blink Dog, which is like the nemesis of a Displacer Beast. Blink Dogs teleport in and out of phase when um, when you meet them. They tend to be good aligned too, so like, Displacer Beasts are evil aligned. Just Blink Dogs are good aligned. Go figure, cats and dogs, the good and evil side of things. So They do have teleport, which very much indicates the type of... Uh, Type of creature they are, so I'm just gonna stick these all in one pile. Just because uh, Wild Shape is a druid ability, allows you to turn into a different element, a different creature, and it already has that, like a turtle spider element. Like the flavor is on par. Uh, bar the Gate is just like a action that you would do in in D and D. Grim Wanderer. Oh, and our rare is Den of the Bugbear. It's a it's a new style of man land. Um, it's pretty cool. We'll stick. That here and our rare is a gloom stalker. Um, gloom stalkers are just I, I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie I'm not familiar with the uh, oh and then you have these tokens that are like uh, dungeon tokens. This is the new mechanic in this set is the dungeon. So 
when it says venture into the dungeon, you pick a dungeon that you want to do, and you can only have one dungeon up at a time, so you have to finish it to get into a new one, but you go through each of the rooms and activate that ability in that room, so it's pretty cool. Um, already off the bat, we got this laser beast and a den of the bugbear, that's already sweet. Oh, look at this, we got ourselves a tavern scene uh, with a dragonborn, a halfling, an elf, and looks like a human. Let's see. This was meet you meet in the tavern by Zoltan Barros. Cool. And our mountain adventure is you venture deep into the heart of the mountain to determine what you can calm. Oh, determine what can calm its quaking rage. Um, sure. Cool. Right off the bat, we got. Oh, so this this slot must be the old timey set, which is the Manticore, which is. I thought Manticores had human faces. This one looks like it has a bat face, but typically they have tail spikes, which they say it. They fly, they're smart, and they're brutal. So, um, Grim Bounty. Mimics. <laughs> Mimics are cool because, well, we probably all know what a mimic is, but... Oh, and they don't have any flavor text. That's too bad. But we got a nice treasure chest. A little dark. A uh, treasure chest with a, a pseudopod tongue hanging out with its mouth licking its lips. It might have just eaten something. Hired Hexblade. Ooh, the Barbarian class. This is a cool enchantment with levels on it. I think this is the first time we've seen a leveled enchantment, but um, they're pretty they're pretty strong, in my opinion. A lot of them are really bonkers. So, if you want to play a Barbarian mm, magic, you can now, which is sweet. We got Fairdell, Fair Days, the Devil's Chosen. This is a little different than the artwork we had Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was the original. Uh, a pact is a tool, not a domination. So I don't know too much about Faraday. I wonder if she's in one of the more recent books that I haven't read. Very well could be. Aberrant Mind Sorcerer. This has got a psionic sorcerer, this, and it has a little d20 that you roll when you um, when w you activate its ability. Spike Trap, which is typical trap. Wizard Class. Sweet, it has no maximum size, which like kind of gives the flavor of having a spell book that can infinitely grow, unlike sorcerers and stuff in D and D. They have a, they have no size. As long as you can learn the spell, you can have it in your hand. Um, when they become a level two, they can draw more cards. It's pretty cool. Wizards are wizards are really powerful in D and D in the mid to late game. Osmodius the Archfiend. This guy is like the god of yeah, the god of devils. Um, he's he's a uh, he's pretty brutal. Binding contract. If you would draw a card, exile the top card of your library face down instead. Ooh. Oh, and then you can return them. This guy's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, look at that. We got ourselves a foil oldie timey. But this is a pixie guide. I really like the way that these... I actually like the foiling on this. The foiling is just the background, which looks really sharp. Congratulations. <coughs> Sorry. And our list card is Quest for the Holy Relic, which I think is kind of... Sums it up. We have a Quest for the Holy Relic in a D and D set. Go figure. All right, all right. I'm gonna try to speed up a little bit. I know that this is taking forever already, um, but I like I like to consume this. This is a hyena of some sort, so a knoll. We have. Oh, look at this! It's got a, it's a monster card. Oh my gosh! But doesn't it's a monster card? This is the probably the best thing about this set. I have not seen these. He's a knoll. Humanoid monster, challenge rating half. 15 armor class, rampage, bite, spear. This is its stats. Now this is so cool. The artist, let's make sure we, we call him out. This is Jesper Ising. Congratulations, Jesper. You have one of the coolest art cards. And I think they feel a little thicker. They feel a little thicker than the regular cards. All right, and our adventure is Into the Forest. As the sun reaches its zenith on the day of the solstice, a castle shimmers into view on the hilltop, just as the ancient text predicted. Right. Only comes out on the, uh, the sun reaches the zenith on the day of solstice, so got to get that adventure in. All right. And our fun fun slot is the Arbor, Arbor of Pegasus, just a flying horse, or Pegasus, I guess. Deadly Dispute. Shit. Now, oh. Devour intellect. Okay, it's not an intellect devour. Another class card. I'm going to look at these because I like these. Um, let's see if it helps give me the feeling of a druid class, which is usually a um, spellcaster of sorts with a bit of shape-shifting. 
when a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain uh, one life. So nature, magic, land, okay. You may play an additional land. You get extra land, so you're really in tune with the land itself. When this class becomes level 3, target land you control becomes a creature. You you gain a contract with the land itself, and it fights for you. So it doesn't go into the wild shape part of a druid, but it does does really f hit the... Um, hit the uh, nature magic. All right, so I don't know Gretchen Twitch fella, Willow, um, but she's a halfling druid. Plants, uh, plant what you wish to see grow. Listen for the stories you want to hear. So I must be needing to read some more um, books because there's a lot of characters I'm not familiar with, uh, which is whatever. There are a ton of them, so. We got ourselves a paladin shield, which is cool. Armor, artifact, oh. We got ourselves a mine fair lair. Gazlak, a lithid scholar. These guys are nasty. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, you may return it to your owner's hand. Well, that's really cool. Whenever one or more creature you control deals combat damage, draw a card. And, all right, sorry about that. Um, and then we have Mordekaiden's Polymorph, which Mordekaiden is like, I believe it was Gary Gygax's wizard character from like one of the original uh, uh, D and D campaign adventures that he wrote into a bunch of like his lore and stuff. So very cool. Where are we putting? Oh yeah, I guess eh, whatever. Um, and then we got another list card right off the bat, which is the Blood Lord of Vaskoth, which not gonna lie. He's a vampire warrior. I feel like he fits into the D&D uh, &D setting fairly easily, too. So, two D&D &D list cards right off the bat. Um, not gonna lie, I love the Knoll art card. Oh, look at this. We got a cool signature. This looks like one of the land cards by pa Pacquiat? Pacchietti? Uh, we'll look, right? We got Adam Pacchietti. It's a mountain. I was right. This looks cool. He has a good looking signature too, right? A big gold signature. Very good. All right, thanks, Adam. And our swamp adventure is you expect to meet hostile drow in this ancient ruin, but they fled long ago. What darkness could have driven them out? So this is weird. The drow don't live in swamps. They live in the underdark, but this Underdark is being represented as a swamp. And I wonder if it's just because it's dark. I don't know. I don't know if I like that feel so much. All right, we got Trisalara, the moon dancer. She's a legendary elf cleric. She's actually pretty good. She just gets one on the counters. Horde robber. Thieves tools. Pretty yeah. Snake people. The uh, Ontai. Powers Persuasion, Feywild Trickster, Trickster Talesman, Paladin Shield, Cloister, oh, Meteor Swarm. A very expensive direct damage spell, and that does 8 damage to just target creatures and planeswalkers. Pretty expensive. I don't know how much play that will see. It's a bunch of different fireballs, I guess. Um, I guess for f four, that's so actually kind of weird. Oh, for four, you're doing eight damage. For five, you're doing eight damage between two people. Uh, little, little, little expensive, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it. And then our Chaos Channeler, which is a wild mage foil guy who's going to do a bunch of different effects. Very cool. And then a uh, magic minigame token card. Well, that's cool. Oh, look at this guy. We got we got ourselves a guy with a little hamster. He looks like he he's wearing like a scaled armor with like some leather pauldrons. Might be a roguish character. I don't know. But rogues don't typically uh Oh, he's a ranger. That makes more sense. Uh, Minsk, beloved ranger. That's funny. His, his animal companion is a hamster. 
that's kind of funny. All right, our island adventure looks to be in the Underdark as well. In crystal-studded waters far below the surface, you discover an incubating egg of mysterious origin. I bet you it's phase spiders. Gross. It might not be phase spiders. Oh, look at that, Neverwinter Dryad. That actually looks like old artwork to me by Jeff D. I think I've seen this, not this particular art, but like I've, I've seen something similar enough to that where it, it's really calling back to those days. All right, Grim Bounty, another Mimic. Oh, Magic Missile. I'm going to look at Magic Missile because that's pretty iconic. This is a iconic spell in Magic, the, or forgotten, well, Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. Can't be countered, perfect, because it never misses its target. Magic Missile deals three damage divided as you choose with three, one, two, or three. This is perfect. It's a little expensive, but I guess choosable damage should be a little expensive. Magic Missile's on par, or on rate. Uh, Iron Golem, Ooh, Shesra the Death Whisperer, Bewitching Wisp, Nadar, Selfless Paladin. Hey, I'm not familiar with this guy either. He's a Dragonborn, which means that he he's come from a he's come from at least fourth edition or later. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I haven't read any of the fourth or fifth edition like novels. Or stuff from that era. Um, fifth edition. I didn't even play fourth edition. I played three and three, five, and five. Uh, and missed four. Four was focused a lot on the minis, and I wasn't really into the minis. But this is a cool card. It's really cheap. Three for three for three. Oh, look at that deck of many things. This is sweet. And this is uh, one of the most powerful and dangerous magic items you can give your players. It can really add a lot of flavor to your D&D adventure, or it can ruin it. Um, so you pay to tap and roll something, and on one to nine, return a card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Actually, pretty good card. That doesn't seem too bad. Um, 19 and 20, draw two cards. All right, right off the bat, these are, this is just good. This is a good card. Um, Roll a d20, subtract the number of cards in your hand. If the result, discard your hand. Oh, yuck. That could not be great. And then 20, put a creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. When that creature dies, its owner loses the game. Oh. Wait, put a creature card. You're the owner. I wonder if... So I have to look into that. If I took somebody else's card and put it onto the battlefield, would they not be able to attack it in fear of losing the game because they technically own it? I think I'm the owner of the card at the time, so I would be responsible for its life or death. That, that'd be dangerous. Um, Grim Bounty. Foil card. And then we got ourselves a treasure token, which is D&D &D appropriate. All right, we got oh, we got ourselves dritzed with a roller line right through the middle. That sucks. And Guinevere. This, this I'm familiar with. This is this is from the Homeland. I don't know. This I've read. I've read enough of Dritz to be pretty. Yeah, Dritz Stewart and by Tyler Jacobs. I'm not gonna lie, he uh, he captured. Capture the two very good. Like they, they, they iconically look like Dritz to Erden and Guinevere. Congratulations. All right, Swamp. I think this is the second Swamp, so I don't think we'll have to do any more Swamps anymore. But as you trudge through the sewers of Baldur's Gate, it dawns on you, where are all the rats? Hmm. Oh, sweet. We got the Mimic in its um, oldie time. This actually looks more mimicky to me. It's got this little pseudopods hanging out, and it got the eyes and its mouth this this is mimic diesel congratulations you 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 win shortcut seeker charm sleep soul knife spot lightfoot rogue reaper talisman Ooh, a drider driders are like drow spider they've been gifted with the blessing of loth who um turns them into like these weird monstrous drow things 
Uh, whenever Drider deals combat damage, create a spider. Okay. With menace and reach. So very tough. They're they're expensive. Oh. Through their form though their forms embody lost image, Driders are unfortunately drow who have failed the Spider Queen. So it's a failure, not a blessing. But it's still a blessing because he like turns you into that. Ugh. Death Priest of Mercule. Oh, I absolutely love these things. These are my favorite. Uh, these are modules from the old original first edition d and I have a few of these. Um, but they turned the land cards into these modules. And this is Cave of the Frost Dragon. Or Frost Dragon. Uh, adventure for characters level 17 to 20. I think that has something to do with the rare, like the levels depending on the rarity so if like a common or uncommon would have different level characters but this is super cool i man i probably will buy singles of these cards to have a complete set of those because these are just absolutely bonkers oh we got ourselves a treasure chest um it's you sacrifice the chest and open it up and it could either be trapped and you lose three life create five treasure tokens which gives you a extra mana if you sacrificed it which I guess I don't know um, 19 to or 10 to 19 you actually get three life and draw three cards which can be pretty useful and 20 search your library for a card if it's an artifact you may put it onto the battlefield otherwise put that card into your hand 20 critical roll pretty harsh pretty good oh look at that we got ourselves a nice land we got ourselves a uh, Nephelet Ophelia's Academy from um, Eldritch Moon. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that's D and D centric, but Academy's place of learning. I'm I'm stretching it. That is, I, I'm gonna say no. We're gonna. I mean, it definitely could be. You could be. You could definitely center an adventure around anything in Magic because they do a pretty good job. Oh, I think this is another land card. This looks like another mountain. Unfortunately, this one's not signed. Let's see. Is this a mountain? Yes, it's the other mountain. And it's done by Sarah Finnegan. Very cool, Sarah. Oh. Is this, is this it? Did we read this one already? Yeah, we already read this one. But this is our foil mountain. An owl bear. These are iconic creatures. Very dangerous. They're basically bears with an owl face. And uh, you can see them in the new game, Baldur's Gate 3, for PC. And maybe maybe that game will be out on other things. But right now it's on PC. It's in early access. And they feature an owl bear in that. Um, it has keen senses. So, like, it recognizes when you're there. That's very cool. Love the art. That's a really good deal. Um, let's see, Burning Hands, Iconic Spell in Dungeon Dragons, a cone shape spell from the Wizard's Palms, setting anything within that cone up to flaze, blaze. Burning Hands deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that permanent is green, deals six. Wow. A little color hate. I like the color hate in this. Lonesome Troll. This looks like a troll from D and D with the big, long, like sausage nose. <laughs> Find a path is a druid card, or a ranger, I guess. Could be a ranger. A non foil treasure chest. Oh, look at that! This is one of the cards I actually have been kind of wanting. We got the art card too. Is Circle of the Druid Dreams. This is a Gaius Cradle, which is an old reserve list card on a stick. So I, I, I appreciate them trying to find, figure out ways to reprint these cards without, I don't know, circumnavigating the reserve list, which is cool. Uh, Dwarven Hold Champion is our foil. Just a axe-wielding dwarf. And a... All right, guys, I gotta be a lot faster at this. I'm, I'm sorry. This video may never actually see the light of day. Because <laughs> it's going to be way too long. Maybe I'll have to break it up into two parts. Um, oh, this is one of those weird little, like, 
flutter fish things like they float around in like the Avernus or whatever. A flume aberration. They're actually good aligned, I think. Telepathic shout tendrils. Oh man, these are cool. I like the creature cards. Oh, let's sorry, shout out to uh Brian Valde or Vela Veleza? Velez? Sorry if I butchered your name. All right, your path lies across the spine of the world, where every cave hides some new dangers. The spine of the world separates like the rest of the world with uh, Icewind Dale and stuff. So, oh, look at that, the Displacer Beast. This is really cool because in this drawing, you see it a lot better, but the Displacer Beast has two sets of front legs and a set of rear legs. And then it has that long, like spiky tentacles that it can use to slap you. Um, it's very, it's very canine-like in some of its facial jaw strength, but it's still feline. So really cool art. I really like, I really appreciate the way that looks. The drawing is done very good by Phil Stone. All right. Scion of Stiga, Genie, Divine Smite, Moon, Bless Cleric, Find the Path, and Clattering Skeletons. All right, Sphere of Annihilation, the one of the oldest artifacts in D and D. This thing just kills you outright. Uh, very cool. I must be a little bit quicker. This is a spell, Raven Fieldment. Um, it's a spell that goes back to at least second edition. It might be first edition. I don't recall. And then we got ourselves a spider token. Gross spider. All right, I'm definitely gonna speed it up. I am I am kind of geeking out over all of this, so like sorry about that. But all right, we got ourselves a storm giant thing happening in the maelstrom. Maybe I don't know. Let's see. We got halls of the storm giant. All right, Alex Stone. This that's what it kind of looked like. A big old giant in the calling some. Pink lightning, very cool. All right. We haven't done this one, so we'll read it. Um, as your ship clears the edge of Waterdeep, which is a big city, one of the biggest in um, Forgotten Realms, uh, Waterdeep Harbor, you notice a pirate sail on the horizon. What has made them so bold? Ooh, the pirates are willing to just come into the... Oh, a goblin javelinier. <laughs> Good. Magic and D&D &D both have goblins... And they do, both do goblins very well. All right. Oh, Darg. That's cool. This is our first dragon. Um, it's a red dragon. One of the biggest chromatic dragons. Actually, I think he's the biggest chromatic dragon. He might be the biggest dragon. Standard dragon. There's some, there's some other types of dragons, but as dragons go, I think the reds are the biggest for, like, volume and size um they breathe fire they're typically evil natured uh very cool dragon uh 50 feet of rope <laughs> awesome everybody needs 50 Ooh, ranger let's see oh ranger is a rare class interesting when ranger enters a battlefield create a 2-2 two -two companion creature wolf right on uh, when you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on that a creature. On target attacking creature. That's kind of bonkers. For cheap. Man, that's cheap. And level three. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Gain the next level as a sorcery to add to its ability. So, like, you get all these no matter what. So, even if you are at level three, you still get the plus the level two ability, which Ranger is bonkers. Man, that's a good card. And then a genie and the dungeon of the mad mage. All right, we got one stack done. I'm sorry, guys. This is taking forever. I know. I am the worst. Oh, we got an illithid uh, or mind flare being surrounded by a party of adventurers, it looks like. It looks like, oh, wait, nope. True Polymorph by Stephen Prescott. They turned themselves into a Mind Flayer, which, not going to lie, I wouldn't do that. All right. Seeking to learn the ways of the ancestors, 
why the ancestors have fallen silent. You made your way to the ancient Karens. That's cool. Direwolf Prowler, just a giant wolf. We've all seen the direwolves from um, Game of Thrones. Very similar to Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, contact the other planes. Ooh, cleric class. If you would gain life, you gain that much plus one. Okay, very cleric-like. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. That's really expensive for a level two ability. Jeez. Whenever you gain life, though. So you can gain life multiple times a turn and add multiple plus one, plus one counters. So that can be pretty bonkers. And then the last ability, when, a, when this class becomes level three, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You gain life equal to its toughness, which would put a plus one, plus one counter on something. And you'd gain that much life plus one. So these are all synergetic with themselves for sure. So maybe that's why they cost a lot, but very cleric-y, I guess. Yep. Uh, we got her before. Oh, these are little stalactite creatures, a lurking roper. They either stalactites or stalagmites. You never know. And they're really good at hiding their um, their danger until you too close. Shocking Grasp is a first level cantrip. Celestial Unicorn. Actually looks good. Um, and our Dancing Sword, which is a super cool, like, um, I wouldn't say artifact level weapon, but very high level magic item. Every Everybody would love to have a Dancing Sword at their side because it can fight for you while you're doing other stuff. Really good for like mages and stuff who need something to kind of tank for them while they're casting spells. A dancing sword can can do that. It can have its own action. And it's a magic item, so it's pretty cool. <gasps> we got ourselves a mimic. I like this mimic art card because you get to see the art a little bit closer up. This adventurer has no idea yet because he's only seen the backside of this treasure chest. But you see the multiple eyes, the pseudopod, and that nice, nasty, purple tooth mouth. Ugh. The thing that gives it away, though, is all the dead bodies on the stairs leading up to the treasure chest. If this guy has a good perception, he'd notice that stuff. And if he's wise or has a high wisdom, he'd probably know that this treasure chest is not what it seems. If I were the mimic, I would have probably cleared out the area. <laughs> so, all right. Um, just gonna move a little bit faster. We got ourselves a cool Gene. Dijin De or Genie Winseer. Very cool. I wonder if they have a Rock Sasha in here, and I wonder if their hands are backwards. Power Word Kill, that's that's a iconic spell from uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Ray of Frost. Oh, we got Limrith. So Limrith was a the protagonist of one of the more recent um, Dungeons, and Dungeons, uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaigns in Forgotten Realms. I don't want to give any spoilers away, but she uh, she was she was a big baddie in in one of the more recent campaigns, and uh, she was pretty cool. She yeah, she was pretty tough. She has Ward Four, which is bonkers. This card's gonna be good. Five cast five five for five with Ward Four draws cards. Yeah. Oh, we got ourselves a foil den of the bugbear like that. What a Wished we could have got that in that weird little format thing. Or that uh, module. Limerith. Very cool card. Oh, look at this. We got a Hydra. All right. Hydra and a dwarf fighting a Hydra. What do we got? Lair of the Hydra. This is a land card by Wayne Reynolds. Oh, I probably didn't shout out the mimic. Oops. Uh, oh, this one looks new. After careful study, you determined that the giant ruins serve to track the movement of the planets. And they will soon align once more. Oh, some intrigue. Some oh, Look at this. In that little spot, we got ourselves a sweet dragon. It's a black dragon. These are acid-shooting dragons. Um, which I guess does pretty good. Acid breath. It gives a 3-3 three, three to the end of turn, so like it's melting your face. I like this full art dragon. Man, this set just <laughs> set does it for me. 
Oh, got ourselves a white dragon, a frosty dragon. Cold breath. All these dudes are freezing. Uh, white dragons are not as bright as like most other dragons. They're very feral. Um, and they tend to like be more of the hunter types. Like They like to chase down their enemies. They're, they remind me of wolves with wings and dragon parts. <laughs> they're, uh, they're gross. All right, a Yontai uh, Malazan. Snake man. Uh, can't be blocked when attacking alone. So I'm just a nice unblockable. And it ventures into the dungeon when it deals damage. This could be cool. Uh, moon blessed cleric and a. So yeah, we're definitely going faster now because we're 24 minutes in and I'm not even halfway done. Oh, we got ourselves the null. Wait, a troll card, which is going to be a stat block. What do you bet? Stat block. Yeah, trolls are very constitution heavy. Yep, yeah, very strengthy. They regenerate. They're nasty, big challenge rating. Uh, and that's Svetlin Velenoy. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, here, here it looks like a real swamp. So we're going to read the swamp. You search for the stolen artifact. Has Your search for the stolen artifact has brought you to the edge of the mire of the dead men. Mm. <gasps> oh, we got ourselves... An evolving wilds. It looks like we got a ranger jumping the falling chasm into the waterfall. Looks like Golos is hanging out here. Just uh, this is super cool. I don't know if that's a Golos. Golos is not part of the um, Forgotten Realms, but that's really sweet. Man, that's really cool. I really like those a lot. Oh, we've got ourselves a wolf pack leader. A two cost wolf. Those aren't gonna be broken. All right, that's pack tactics. A long rest, really expensive for a rest. Must be staying in a really, no black on here, it's like double printed. Um, return at tar X cards with different mana values to your hand. If eight or more cards were returned to your hand this way, your life becomes equal to your total, your starting life total. Exile long rest. Holy bonkers. This card could be really crazy. We play with cards like this. Um, uh, what's that uh, land from, it's a black land that kind of does the same thing from Zendikar Rising. A bullet, this is a nasty little gnome eater. They love gnomes. Um, they're burrowers and they jump high into the ground and then they speed back to the back to uh, they jump real high and then they speed back to their target at like really um, fast rates and I think that's why they were called bullets very cool oh we got ourselves a Stony Brook schoolmaster I think this is my first um, that might not be my first duplicate uh, list card but I have pulled that Stony Brook schoolmaster in the list before so Okay, well, it looks like we got a hobgoblin crew fighting a wizard of sorts. Den of the Bugbear. So, I guess I was a little bit wrong. It's a bugbear, not a hobgoblin by Jeff Easley. I guess I should have known. They weren't wearing armor. Hobgoblins tend to be a little bit more militaristic. Uh, alarmed by the news you brought, the Storm Giant King of the Maelstrom has called his kin to council. We saw the storm giant earlier. Celestial unicorn, just iconic unicorn looking creature. It's a nice secret door. Mordekin's polymorph. Bruner Battlehammer, he's he's uh, Dritz Stewardin's friend. They go on a lot of adventures together, or have gone on a lot of adventures together. Um, Mind Flare, just a Straight up mind flare. Uh, these guys are gross. And we got ourselves another one of the. Anyway, do we already have one of these? Yeah, I think we did. Oh, wait, this is a foil version. We got the non foil and the foil version. Actually, the foil version looks pretty cool too, because it's just foil on a little. 
thing there and like the gold. Either way, that's pretty cool. Cave of the Frost Dragon. Sorry, I keep saying giant. Very awesome. <coughs> okay. Let's see, what do we got next? What do we got next? I'm so excited. Best set to date. We got ourselves a Drider. It's going to be a creature stat card. All right. A stat card by Jody Muir. Driders are challenge rating six, even more dangerous than a because of their innate spell casting. Yeah, they're uh, they're very smart, they're very wise, they're pretty good statistic wise. A lot of hit points, very high armor class. Do not do not fight Driders unless you are prepared. Okay, let's see. You trace attentions in Ten Town to the dwelling uh, dwindling reindeer population. What has been hunting them? Probably Yeti. I would expect Yeti. Uh, Yetis are pretty popular in that area. An Iron Golem. Alright. Ooh, fly. Ooh, Hand of Vecna. This is like Tomb of Annihilation stuff. Um, Vecna is a powerful Lich. Lich are... Uh, Basically Voldemort, but more skeletal. Um, this is his hand. Apparently, he made his hand into a Horcrux. Army veteran. And a zombie token. Hand of Vecna. Powerful artifact, if you bump into it. Though it's evil. Uh, the artifact itself has an evil alignment. This looks like a red dragon art card. I wonder, is it going to be a stat block? Because if it is, if it's an ancient, it's going to be like a 19 or 20 challenge rating. Nope, it's not. No stat block for the dragon. I'm not surprised. Rudy Siswanto. Siswanto. Well, I'm going to say you captured the red dragon pretty good. I love the dark horns on this guy. The big, broad shoulders. Red dragons are... They're supposed to be the scariest of them. I think you captured fear with that particular red dragon. All right. You meant to simply rest in Huddlestone, or Hundlestone, but the miners have told you stories of whispers in the darkness, or dark below. These are so cool. Oh, bave. oh that's a common. Baleful Beholder. Look at this guy. These guys are one of the more dangerous creatures in Dungeons & Dragons. Pretty cool. Iconic as hell. I think that might be the first... Well, there's eye blights and stuff in other games, but... <laughs> bag of holding, portable hole. A couple cool artifacts right off the bat. Oh, look at this. We got another one of these lands. Hall of the Storm Giants. This would be cool in that module thing. Uh, big 7-7 seven, seven man land. Very cool. <gasps> hey, we got the Baleful Beholder foil. I actually like the... Uh, custom art or the throwback art a little bit better but this still kind of kind of interesting shooting off one of its eye stalks San, yeah center eye shoots off an anti-magic cone whatever it's looking at anything in that cone is um, can't use magic and then it has it randomly selects a eye stock to shoot a different type of laser beam from it and some of those lasers can be instant death or fear or whatever we got ourselves a Noggle Hedge Mage. It actually looks like a, it's an ass wizard. That's very funny. <laughs> an ass wizard. That could have way different connotation. If I was going to be a wizard, an ass wizard doesn't sound too terrible. Oh, this is a gold dragon. So these are good aligned dragons. Um... The gold dragons are very uh, iconic because of the way their wings are built. They're like a, they kind of remind me of like a, a like a sailfish, because the wings go all the way down their bodies and they're very long bodies. That tail like just keeps extending for a long time and it creates that like almost, um, like Chinese dragon that you see like a lot of times. But they do have uh, four legs, like dragons do, not like Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim doesn't have dragons in them. Just saying. Those aren't dragons. Those are wyverns, but whatever. This is a gold dragon. Stamlock. 
No, I didn't figure it didn't. Um, Adult Gold Dragon by Chris Ron. Very cool. He did a very good job with that. That's very Gold Dragon-like. Back-to-back dragons. Uh, those are the metallic dragons. Metallic tends to be good. We've done this one here. We got ourselves a Clattering Skeleton, a black skeleton creature card. Cool. Very iconic skeletons. You meet in the tavern. Kick in the door. Ooh, Dungeon Descent. This kind of reminds me of Mordor from Lord of the Rings. You shall not pass. All right. Oh, Bronor, Battle Hammer, Foil. Got this nice red bearded dwarf. This guy's. <laughs> knew you'd find ye, I knew I'd find you in trouble if you if came out. Oh, I can't do an accent. <laughs> I looked for you. <laughs> he uh, he was very cool. He's an older guy. I think he has a daughter that was pretty popular. Um, this is a manticore. Yeah, this has that human-y looking face, the spiky tails. They can shoot those things at you, and they are nasty. He's already eaten a soldier. He's kind of like tiger sh striped, so his his body is uh, of a tiger, maybe. He's got the bat wings and the human face. It's a manticore. And it has a stat block. Cool. Manticores are challenge rating three. They can be very, very dangerous for a three. Um, their tail spikes have a very long range. They can fly, and most times they can fly out of range of a party. So challenge rating three is modest. I think you have to be very, very careful. Okay, here we go. Before the Elf Queen will aid you, you must find a way to cure the strange rot afflicting the roots of the ancient tree. She's going to let you do some stuff, but you have to help her. All right, big old giant. Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. Frost Giants are nasty little buggers. Um, better than Stone Giants, so I don't like Stone Giants at all. They're like, there's nothing redeeming about Stone Giant. This card, I think, is one of the most dangerous cards in the game. Um, it's a mill card that mills to exile, and it can mill a lot of cards. This... This is far stronger than the hideous laughter in D and D. So this card's bunker. Oh, look at that! We got ourselves a book of exalted deeds. I recently read this card was banned. That's a bummer. Legendary artifact, an air cult elementalist. Just a typical elemental card, and not too familiar with the air cult. So uh, book of exalted deeds. I'm not. Yeah, whatever. I, I, that card looked like it should have been banned. I think this is it's a tiefling of some sort, right? Or maybe not. Maybe it's... I don't know. Let's see. We got ourselves Faraday, Devil's Chosen art card. I, oh, we've gotten all three of these things now. By Maglia Villeneuve... Villeneuve? I'm not gonna lie, it looks really cool here with the wings spreading out in like kind of a flaming pattern. Man, these art cards look a little, they look so cool. Um, I'm not gonna worry about this anymore. Loadsome Troll, another one of these long troll nose. He, he's obviously regenerating one of his arms. Had probably lost it in a battle. Dragon Fire. Inclusive Painter. Oh, a Green Dragon. They do Poison Breath. Chaos Channeler. Skeletal Swarming. Plus two Mace. <laughs> Straight up plus two Mace Artifact. There you go. Plus two, plus two. <laughs> Very good. That's pretty iconic for a Dungeon Dragons card. Just a standard plus Mace. Oh, this is one of those Ropers. And he's gotten himself an adventurer. I think he may be done. I think he's going to be eaten. And, uh, you know, stat card, pretty dangerous. Andrew Marr. 93 hit points. Very strong. 
Grasping tentacles bite and reel. Yep. Large monstrous. Ooh, a basilisk. Basilisks are very similar to that and like um though these apparently have legs and Death Touch is pretty similar. Uh Harry Potter was more of a snake. This basilisks were always kind of lizard snakes in my information. So when Harry Potter came out, it threw me off a little bit. Ooh, Bard class. Bard class is a rare class. Uh, legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on them. Already making them legendary. Legendary spells you cast cost a green and red less uh, to cast. It only affects the actual colored mana. And then the last level, when you cast a legendary spell, exile the top two cards of your library, and you may play them this turn. Bards are pretty powerful in this game. Wow. Uh, wild shape, foil. That's a, that's a pretty powerful uh, class there. <laughs> you can summon all of the legendary... Oh, there's a mind flare. Ugh. Gross. I don't even want to look at it. Um, yeah, they're super... Cause they, yeah, they're... They're they're bad news. You don't want to be anywhere near them. Darken drew himself a gross mind flare. Ugh. Goblin javelin near. I think we've seen that guy. Divine smite. Oh, we got ourselves a rare Nadar selfless paladin. It's that three three for three in the old school dragonborn paladin. Hobgoblin, Javelinier, or, sorry, Captain, I, I don't know. Oh, we got ourselves Relearn. This is a cool card. Return target instant, interrupt, or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand for three. This is just a little instant recursion. That's actually a playable card. Let's see, what do we got here? We got... A party with a dragonborn. It looks like uh, a green dragonborn, so it's not Nadar. We got a cleric, or s looks like a cleric, and looks like a ranger, or maybe a th nope, definitely a ranger wearing like a medium armor. So let's see what is. You come to the Knoll Camp by Billy Christian. Yep, party going to the Knoll Camp. I don't really. S oh, I guess in the background there's all the gnolls, the little hyena jackal guys. All right, that makes sense. I wasn't looking at the background art. Another owl bear, and an owl bear. A little blue dragon. Not um, Limerith, but a blue dragon. Hey, we got ourselves a white. This is actually what I've I won some uh, some pre-release games with this card here. This card was really good. Uh, white hill giant, herd Roger. Hill giants are gross. Most hill giants are just eaters. They're um, they're very similar to like gnolls in the fact that they uh, they just want to fill their bellies. They uh, they tend to eat overeat. This is a Tarrasque. Um, it is one of the most fearsome beasts in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and it oh no, this is a basilisk. Oh. Wow, I I got that wrong. I need to turn in my D&D &D card. Brett Howell. Hollowell. Petrifying gaze. That's the danger. They can turn you to stone very early in the game. Oh, sweet. We got ourselves another, uh, another dragon card. This is a red dragon in full art. Oh, I love it. That's that art that I really like, too. Cool. Man, those are the best. Ooh, a sorcerer. That's a rare, you know, maybe power two. All right. When the sorcerer class enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard two cards. All right, so a little, little small loot effect or rummage effect. Uh, creatures you control have tap for red or blue to cast instants or sorceries. That's still pretty good. Um, probably tying to, like, the sorcerer's ability to ins to have like a s couple spells in his head that he can just cast whenever he wants. 
And then level three, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that deals spell uh, deals damage to, oh, that spell deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of instants. And, wow, that's actually pretty good. So you can cast like returning spells and do direct damage. Instrument of the Bard. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a harmony counter on Instrument of the Bard. For four, search your look for a library of. Oh, so this kind of. Actually, that actually might be playable too. Oh, a foil mimic. And we got ourselves a <laughs> grind to dust. Uh, Hour of Devastation card. I'm not sure this one's good. Put a plus one, a negative one counter on two target creatures. Not bad. It's dust aftermath. Exile any creature, unnumbered targets with one one counters on them. Yeah, not terrible. Not terrible. It's a lot to set up that card, and since you can't use both sides, I don't. Or can you? You can't use both sides. All right, so they are a source, a wizard reading a book, maybe a cleric. You got a halfling, or nope. That could be a gnome. That looks like a gnome. Reviewing a map with a ranger and a. Looks like a fighter. Dragonborn, so paladin, probably or dragonborn paladin, right? What is this? You, f no, this is um, uh, you find the villain's lair by Gabor Zilskizzy. I'm sorry, butchered your name. A bullet, a sharp nose for jumping. Another bullet. This they've been doing that kind of. All right. We got ourselves Wish, the most powerful spell in the game. It's a ninth level spell. You may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. Yep, that's what Wish does. It's a little weird and red, but whatever. Uh, Dungeon Crawler, Foil, and Tomb of Annihilation. All right, guys. I'm going to probably break this into... I, I did break this into two, uh, two uh, videos because this is ridiculous. We got ourselves a Baleful, uh, Baleful Beholder. Stack card, big challenge rating 13, one of the bigger ones we've seen. Lars, Grant, West. These things are nasty. Anti-Magic Cone, uh, Eye Rays. Yeah. Super Spellcasters. All right, we got Barrowin. This is, I think, uh, this is her da his daughter. Um, the uh, dwarf I was talking, I already forgot his name, of Clan du Urden. She's a dwarf cleric. Uh, Bruner. Bruner Battlehammer. Oh, Lair of the Hydra. We got ourselves a Lair of the Hydra card, which is a... It's a man land, but... Um, until the end of turn, Lair Hydra becomes an XX green Hydra creature. It's still land. Can't be zero. So, you can make it whatever size you want. This is actually kind of bonkers. That's pretty good. Hex Blade. And we got ourselves a Vanguard of Brisma. A... Looks like, um, what is that? Uh, Born of the Gods. Oh, we got ourselves another Beholder. I think it's the same one. Uh, the Beholder, this is the art, this is the art card. This is the Baleful Beholder, just the standard art card, 68 of 81 by, um, Justine, uh, Justine Jones, very cool. A foil land card. A dire wolf prowler, and we have Volo's guide to monsters. Volo, he's the guide to monsters. He's a bard who tells you all. Of, he goes into the weirdest places to get information on monsters and records them so you can see them. He's a pretty iconic character. Hey, another rare. We got ourselves Sunburst, Clearwater Goblet. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may gain one life for each charge on the goblet. And you get a, for every color, so you can get five life a turn. It'd be good with a cleric card. Just boom, five life. All right, 
this looks like we got a fighter elf and a tiefling sitting on a treasure chest. Maybe, I don't know what this is, thief skill or something. Oh, this is The Long Rest by Chris Seaman. Eh, they were, one guy's relaxing, the other one looks like they're arguing about what they're going to do tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's right, we got ourselves a mimic card. That's our second mimic. A bullet. And a fighter class. Fighter Fighters are gold, or rare, so. When a fighter class enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Oh, right, you grab your sword. Uh, for level two, equip abilities cost two less to activate. All right, you equip your swords quick. And then whenever a creature you control attacks, up to one target creature blocks it. Up to one target creature block it, blocks it. This combat, if able, up to. So it can only be blocked by one creature. Oh, sweet. Inferno of the Star Mounts. This is a big old red dragon. Can't be countered. It's a flying 6-6 six, six for 6. It's got haste. Oh, shit. <laughs> Inferno of the Star Mounts gets a plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. When its power becomes 20 this way, it deals 20 damage to any target. Yeah, good luck. That would be a fun way to beat an opponent. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to buff this up to 20 and swing in flying if it doesn't kill you I'm gonna do 20 damage to you <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> I guess if you're playing multiple people hey this is a Etten uh, being talked to a white dragonborn yep Etten creature card there you go two headed battle axe morningstar they're pretty strong they're kind of giant like yep large giant I was going to say, they fall into the giant uh, class type. All right, Ranger's Bow. Layer of the Hydra. Cool, we got ourselves another one of these cards. I only got two packs left. I love these things, man. These are so good looking. Another rare, 17 to 20. Very cool. Noel Hunter and Moon Mist from Innistrad. All right. Man, those are so good looking. Such good looking cards. Ooh, the art card here. Full art card of an iron golem. Is it going to be a creature? Nope, it's not. Justina, Justine Jones, sorry. Iron golem. Looks pretty sweet. You got the full art. Iron golem. Oh, that's a little spikes. Don't give it a hug. Not like the iron giant. Which everybody loved and wanted to hug. Pixels he died. Rogue class is a gold. All right, rogue class. Whenever a creature you uh, control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at it for as long as it remains exiled. Hmm, weird. Um, creatures you control have menace. That's huge. Uh, you may play cards exiled with rogue class, and you may spend mana as though. Oh my gosh, that's bonkers. I love that. <laughs> and we got ourselves Evan Death, Draco Lich, the dragon zombie. She's actually, um, I think there's a whole like uh, cult of the worship of Evan Death. Oh, she's pretty good. Half elf monk. And a treasure token. All right, last pack, guys. I'm sorry that took so long. This was an hour long video for me. It may not even get on. Oh, and our last card signed. Oh, it's cool. It's like a planner portal. Bar the Gates by Joanna Vess. Super cool. Joanna Vess has a cool signature. Kind of reminded me of my own. It's canceling that spell. Very cool. All right. A Noel Hunter as our little card here. Fate Reversal. Green Dragon. Temple of the Dragon Queen. Got ourselves Hive of the Eye Tyrant. This is a black beholder land, man land, super cool. And Goblin Javanir ending on a dragon, the Mad Mage. That was super fun. I got to get up and do something else because I've been opening cards for a very long time. All right, guys, thanks. Peace.